my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ground Crew, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Josh Gerson, along with my co-host, Bill Ron. What up? Got a big week for you guys. A lot to talk about. Um, to kick things off, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe. Toss us a review. We appreciate your support. Follow us on all social platforms. They will be listed below. Guys, where would you like to kick things off? What, what's, what's sticking out to you? Because I, I got a couple things, but I know we kind of were bouncing around with our, our show plan. So I, I How I would really like to start off okay. is the sweetest thing that I think that has happened in, in baseball in forever. I agree. Uh, so those who don't know yet, Aaron Judge mashes a home run, uh, goes into the upper deck, Guy, uh, a Toronto Blue Jays fan is there, grabs the balls like, yes, turns around, and a little kid behind him is wearing a Judge jersey, is a Yankees fan, and he turns around, looks at the kid, and goes, here you go, hands the ball to him. The kid is like, thank you, and then realizes the magnitude of him being gifted this, and just starts breaking down crying and hugging the guy. Mm-hmm. Completely, complete stranger. And it is, co- it is so wholesome. And so needed to see on social media and warmed everything. I sent it to you guys, like, mm-hmm. like all these, like, amazing. And then to hear what happened after. Uh, the following day, in pure, like, just incredible fashion, obviously social media got it out there super quick. Um, the kid got to meet Aaron Judge the next day. The fan got to meet Aaron Judge as well, the guy who gave him the ball. And he also got a George Springer signed jersey. Yep. Just like a great little full circle way to complete the whole story. And it, it was just incredible. The, I think the kid was crying when he met Aaron Judge. Yep. Obviously. Yeah. Um, like an eight-year-old kid, nine-year-old kid. Like It's, it's a zero. Sure. It's a zero. Like for people, I guess, our age meeting Derek Jeter or something like that, it's the same It's the same thing. It's incredible. Yeah. Really, really, really cool moment. They really did a great job of just then just being people. You, yep. we, we were talking about this before the show. Like it's so often that – we look at all these people when we look at what they're doing and it's like they're superstars and they act like superstars. Mm-hmm. And it's like at the end of the day, guys, like you're only able to make all the money you're making is because those people showed up and paid money for it. Facts. Right. And they, they cared about it. Yep. Right. And to see them just be people and be like, Hey, listen, I saw that video. That's freaking awesome of you. Thank you so much. And like, I want to add to it. Mm-hmm. Like, Awesome. Amazing. Yep. Great story for baseball. They needed it, and it was fabulous. Absolutely. And obviously, Aaron Judge just being a great guy, on top of the fact that he is tearing the cover off the baseball. Eight homers in his last ten games, mashing, making the Yankees look a little uh, suspect with their, well, their so contract. Now the, so now the question becomes, if you're the Yankees, do you have to raise your offer? I think so. God I, forbid for them that he has a, he has a MVP year. If he has an MVP, but here's the here's the thing. What's he on pace for for home runs? He's got nine already. I think I did the math, and he's on pace for 142 home runs. Like he he's That's definitely gonna happen. He's he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna hit 100 home runs and like set the record. Like it Easily. might happen. Like Easily. it could it could happen. Yeah. Um, with the pace he's currently on, if he stays healthy, which he has not done very much. If he stays healthy, what's a realistic number for him? As a home run hitter in the division he's in. Yeah. He could absolutely threaten Barry Bonds' single-season home run record. And if you've got a, a motivated Aaron Judge, like the only thing that's going to start to slow him down home run-wise mm-hmm. would be if they start to intentionally walk him like they did to Barry at that point in time in well, his career. I'm sure he's even if they're not intentionally walking him, they're, they're going to start feeding him just garbage pitches and trying to like not allow him to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and if he does, if he just stays patient, he's going to end up having a 500 on base percentage. Like he he genuinely judge has all of the the power mm. to hit 75 home runs yep. right he could do everything that barry could do his batting average is is great he can do all of the things as a hitter that you want the challenge is he's just not an outfielder long term so like the money for what you're paying it's like okay you're gonna be a dh like we have to put and to him he's like no i'm an outfielder i want to get paid that i do all of it mm-hmm. and it's like dude when you're 34 you're gonna have to be a dh you're gonna have to stop playing the outfield at your size at least Full time. You maybe could get twenty games a year where you go out there thirty games a year, but like, why would we risk it when you're such a good hitter? Uh, but yeah, I mean, he 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 could chase after records this year. Yeah, he, we talked about. It. I think I think there's going to be a bunch of people who get north of fifty this year once things get popping. I know the ball's down now, but I, I think that uh, 
I think things are going to get spicy at some point in time this year. Yeah, I think so too. And also, like for his his like longevity, they do also have Stanton. He's been playing the outfield more. So if there there was a place for him to have a balance where if he wanted to keep playing the field and also have the DH option and be, be able to flip flop with another big power hitter, it is the Yankees. Um, and the Yankees have been hot. They've won eleven of their last twelve. Hot. Um, they in the many power rankings, they are ranked as the best team in baseball right now. They deserve it now. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, the Mets at two. I, I also I, I also agree with. They did lose a series to the Braves, their first one of the year. Uh, but we'll we'll get to that later. They didn't what? lose. They lost a series. They tied. Oh, they tied. Oh yeah, it was four, tied the series. Four, don't four, don't yeah. no no Mets you're right, slander. No, you're right. You're right. By the by the other maybe Mets fan here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Yankees have been on a, on, a, on a tear. Um, I think it. The the thing for me is you. It's it's also still early in the season, right? So like. Yeah. In the first five games when Yankee fans were like, all right, punt the season, we're garbage. You can't also, in five seconds later, be like, all right, we're the best team in baseball, we're in the World <coughs> Series. I, I need you to take some more time and let this thing I need all out. the Yankees fans to sit on that L who were like, Cashman's trash. Yep. This is all Cashman's fault. IKF's garbage. <laughs> I mean, there were guys who were like, Cashman's never been good. Uh, there's guys who were like, this is all his fault. Mm-hmm. You're right. This streak right now, this 11 and 12. This is entire, entirely Cashman's fault. Yep. And you know what? The reactionary bad moves that the Yankees maybe have made in the past, blame it entirely on Yankees fans, not on Cashman. He responding and doing what he's getting pressure from outside media sources to do. Mm-hmm. Reality is, Cashman has put together a team. We talked about it last year. I loved what they started to do by getting Rizzo to get the lefty bat. Yep. Right? Doing some Who things. Who also to, leads the league in home runs right now. And do some. Tied. Tied. Fine. fine whatever. Did some things to to reorganize that team. Then by getting rid of what I have been saying was a problem, which was that you needed to have Gary Sanchez play, be a DH more often than he was playing. He couldn't do it with the Yankees. So you had too often that Judge Stanton and him were all getting hurt or weren't good because they were all exhausted from being big people playing out of position. Right? Now he's gone. Hashigioka, I'm saying it right, right? Hagashioka, uh, H- sure. Hagashioka, yeah. <laughs> uh, he it has been better for them behind the dish, doing the things that he's doing. He's fine. IKF has been massive mm-hmm. for what they're doing, and that trade just repurposed the team so well that it got everybody back to a better position. Yes, I think all Yankees fans could really agree to is that they didn't care about production behind the plate. We needed a uh, – not we. I ain't part of that squad. Uh, they cool. needed a, oh, love that. a love defensive that catcher, <laughs> and they got two of them. Higgy's always been a solid guy, but then they also got um, – oh, goodness. Why am I bl- – Deans, why am I blanking on his name from the Rangers? Oh, goodness. I'm looking it up. Oh, my goodness. Whatever. They got another guy from the Rangers who's a solid, uh, solid backstop there doing his job, and the Yankees are second in the league uh, in ERA right now as a team. So that's obviously also been huge for them, getting a lot of production out of their pitching staff. Garrett Cole's been starting to figure it out again. Trevino. Trevino, that's who I was thinking of. Um, And their relief pitchers have been absolute savages. So nice little mixture for them. And they, uh, I think they, did they split with the Jays or they lose the series or win the series? Uh, I'll look it up on. I think yeah they they just lost last night so that broke their streak. But I I think it was only a three game series. Yeah, I think they won the series. So and and that was huge for them. I think. I think that too was in talking with Yankees fans. That was the big test. It's like they've kind of played the Orioles. They played the Blue Jays a little earlier, but they weren't kind of on their hot streak that they are now. And then to go in and, and play really solid against them is huge. And I think is a reason that they're in number one right now because we picked the Blue Jays to win the division. So that's big for them. And, and I think let's let's just like the Mets, we're not gonna. I I would caution to not get too jumpy on like we're definitely going to the World Series type thing because I already see that in the in the Twitterverse. But, yes, the Yankees are playing really well, and I think they're playing up to what we thought they could do. Um, so it'll be very interesting to watch them as they continue on through the season. Um, back to the Mets for a minute. Last week, the uh, day after we recorded our show, the Mets tossed a combined no-hitter, their first one in the Mets history, um, second no-hitter in Mets history uh, overall. Just – a spectacular pitching performance. Um, did you watch any of it, either of you? I, I did. I yeah. watched, and and uh, we all talked about it. I think during it, right? And mm-hmm. I I messaged you, and I go, "Does it count?" Uh, I don't know if I love counting, 
a combined no hitter as a no hitter. See, I, I completely disagree with that. I think it's an amazing, but it has to be its own categorical thing. All right, it's so a let, combined. Let, let's no-hitter. go with this because I have a question. Sure. Segwaying. Um, last year, Bumgarner, I believe it was, had the uh, no hitter perfect game, whatever it was, through seven innings. Does that count more than a combined no hitter for a team? So say that whole thing again. So there was only a seven inning game. I believe it was Bumgarner had either a no hitter or a perfect game during that seven inning game. No. Same Combined no hitter is better than a shortened no hitter. We had someone throw seven perfect this year. It doesn't count. Yeah. Like, no, genuinely, like, it, 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 that's a thing. As, like, as much as it was the scheduled game, like. I, I, I'm not trying to take away the no hitter in what it was, mm-hmm. but also it's just a, I don't know if we can count it the same as a single guy going up there and not allowing a hit. No, I, I don't think it is, but I think in terms of the energy for the fans and for the team, it's almost, honestly, in terms of like team morale, it actually might be better. Because it, that meant that we had five guys go out there and shove and do their job. And especially for, like, a guy like Tyler McGill who went six no-hit innings. Like, that's great. So, I think overall, like, you, you see that like the team was super ecstatic. The the fans were hyped. I, I, I understand the whole, like, for personal achievement's sake, like, it, be, it being different than one guy throwing a no-hitter. But I don't think any, it, like, discounts it any less of, like, the team accomplishing the feat. You yeah. know that there's at least going to be one play that saves the game that was uh, Brandon Nimmo's diving catch. Like, there's always going to be something. The whole team has to be involved. I think it's still great. Um, the Mets have, I think, the fourth highest or fourth uh, lowest, fifth lowest ERA in, in the league right now. Been pitching really well. Uh, Tyler McGill came out yesterday and, and threw – uh, I think he, he didn't give up a hit through the first four. He ended up giving a co- giving up a couple runs in the fifth inning. But overall, he's been pitching amazing as our fourth slash fifth starter. We also had Carrasco throw eight shutout uh, two days ago. Like the Mets pitching staff overall has been fantastic, even without Degrom. Well, so the Mets the Mets currently and again like Francisco Lindor is quote unquote in a slump, uh, hitting the ball hard, but not necessarily getting the results he wants. Lindor is the thirty fourth uh, ranked player in the MLB by WAR right now. And that's with a one war as an offensive player, right? So he's been a little bit better than average at defense, but he's been a a, a valuable piece offensively. So I was just looking through war because I was looking at different people. McGill's in the top 50. Nimmo's in the top 50. McNeil, Lindor are all in the top 50. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it, but... When you start going through, you got four or five players from the Mets in the top 50 war in, in baseball right mm-hmm. now. You start looking at that and saying, okay, there's 30 teams. You should at best have two guys in the top 50, right? When you're starting to look out, having four or five guys in the top 50, that's why they're winning, right? It's like they're doing a lot of things across a lot of things, mm-hmm. uh, which which is, ha, has been great. Um, but I think for me, like, just with the no-hitter stuff, when we're looking at stuff historically, I, I'm with you that it meant a lot for the team because everybody was playing well, and that's great for team morale. But it's it's to me, it's a little less shiny than a single person no-hitter. And that's fine. And I think that's why I, you got to call it you got to call it a combined no-hitter. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. You can never say they threw the second no-hitter. I right, can't, that's what I I can't say. say it was that. the first combined no-hitter, the second yes. no-hitter the Mets team has been a part of. Sure. That's – I'm here for That's it. That's it, and it was exciting and, and glorious. I'm here for all that. Um, sticking with pitching. Yesterday, uh, obviously, there's been, like, the different uh, pine tar checks and, and different things now. A little bit less um, invasive than last year's where guys were, had to take their belts off and do all the, the different things. Max Scherzer was just dropping his drawers to, you know, in in uh, in protest, I guess, of, of the umpires doing it. And then uh, yesterday, Madison Baumgartner was getting checked, and the umpire – I, I, I want to say was being a little too aggressive with it. Did you see the video? Like the, the I mean, slow did you guys down? watch the TikTok that I sent you this morning? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Definitely no? not. No, I don't think I did. So was it, it the slow mode version? It's 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 a slow mode version. Okay. But yep. I mean, I'm I'm even gonna gonna play it for you guys right here on my phone. Okay. So for anyone who's just listening. Oh I no! You. I, I have it on the camera. I hope with the no, power. No. I hope with the power of editing that we can even get this guy in there. Cool. Oh no, I'm sure. Like, we look can. at him just staring into his eyes. Just de- like that's so that's so unnecessary. Because you know what he would say? Like I'm looking at you to see if you start panicking. 
I'm looking for dilation in your like, bro. Guy was being mad aggressive, and then I saw that I saw comp videos of like other pitchers being checked, and it's just like a little like slap on the hand, basically yeah. a dap. And then they're like, all right, now you're good, keep going. This guy was going OD and he's, obviously he's mad touching bombs. Touching each finger and he's like, you feel sticky. I'm the ne- yeah. I'm the Magneto kid. Yeah, that's and, my problem. <laughs> and and I'd say Madison Bumgarner is kind of like a Max Scherzer type, or when he's pitching, he's a really aggressive, locked in guy. And this dude just kind of like pressing him, just absolutely sent him off. He was ready to throw hands at the umpire. Got ejected. I think it was it was the first inning, and he got tossed. The umpire was like, just like kind of shrugging it off, like no. Hey, listen though, that would that would just protest protest too much. I guess so. Well, I mean, why why are you he so could, mad? He could have just sucked it up. Why yeah. are you so mad? Like he's fin- maybe he felt something on your hand, and you're just mad because you're like he's gonna find out I've been cheating if I get tossed right now. Nobody will check me for anything else. They won't find out that I got a giant cheat stick in my back pocket. Like, I don't know what was going on. Like, so, listen, I think the I think it was a step over the line. Mm-hmm. But I think Bumgarner, like, look what happened to Scherzer. You made the perfect mention. Scherzer didn't get tossed. And no. Scherzer got checked, like, four or five times. Yep. Right? Like, you got checked one time. Like, yeah, he's touching your hand, and he's trying to feel if you got sticky on it. And he's maybe eyeballing you. But, like, man, listen. Your your job is to get out there and provide for your team. Getting chucked in the first inning, that ain't it, Chief. No, nah, it's it's not ideal. But I, honestly, in the scheme of like how they've had to go about this, I, I I don't really have a problem with how they've been doing it. Like, cool, you touch his hand. It's pretty obvious if he has pine tar on it for the most part. In the in the time it takes from him to walk from the mound to the baseline, I doubt he's getting rid of it. Thanks. So I'm I'm honestly like perfectly fine with it. They're not doing it that often, so. I, I don't see an issue with it, but there are guys like Bumgarner, assures her a little bit who will like take exception to it. Um, but I think for the most part, the majority of baseball is kind of just like, all right, it's part of the game now. It is what it is. Um, and, I, and I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I guess Bumgarner, Bumgarner thought otherwise. Like he, he's just trying to get, he's just trying to get back to the, uh, the giants, the giants. Yeah. Josh, trying, Josh's prediction of Josh's the trade deadline. Yeah, he's trying I mean, to make that move. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Diamondbacks will take a run. I don't know. They're sne- you, you said they're sneaky good. Sneaky good. I think the, the biggest problem they had was playing the Mets. You take away that series, they're around the same level as the Phillies have been, the, the uh, Atlanta Braves have been, a lot of different teams. They also play in an obscenely hard division. Mm-hmm. Like, you start layering it out, like, everybody in their division is good. Like, I mean, listen, the Diamondbacks are at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the division, but they're 13-13 and 13 right now. 13 and 13. That's, that's and not that bad. And they lost two series to the Mets. Yep. If you take that out, they're a winning team. Yep. That means that they've probably played their division more than anything else. True? Probably, right? yeah. Like, we'd have to look at that. So then when you start looking at the standings and you start, like, layering this thing out, you're like, damn, they're 13 and 13. San Francisco is the team ahead of them at 14 and 10. San Francisco took – would have been better if they didn't play the Mets. Yep. They lost. They they went one and three against the Mets. Colorado's fourteen and ten. Would Colorado be below both San Francisco and Arizona right now? Yes, I think so. I don't think that they're mm. the truth. Arizona's got three pitchers under a two. Actually, three pitchers under a one point five ERA right yeah. now. The, yeah. The 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 Arizona Diamondbacks are not as bad as everybody thinks, and you know, like like uh, Marte became one of my favorite players watching him play against the Mets. Catal Marte? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he is – he's everything that Jazz Chisholm is, but he's not as overt. Yes. But, like, as a player, like, I look at them, like, same kind of category. He's someone, before we got our Marte, that I wanted the Mets to oh. pick up. Hey, listen. He's a great player. I, I, I hear you. The only downside is the Mets have – this was, this was the pretty... best second baseman in baseball. Right well, now. would you rather have Jeff McNeil or Marte that's hitting 174 and a 568 uh, OPS? I'd rather have. I'd rather have what Jeffrey. I just said, which yeah, is yeah. Jeffrey. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. But, like it's not Jeff a with his 337 well, batting hold, average. But, but I'm crazy on. for saying he's going to win the batting title. But no, I don't <laughs> think you were crazy. I think you're crazy for saying he's going to win the batting title, and then also all the other things you said, and then saying the you're Mets right. I know. Win the I know. I don't want to trigger it's you right now. You're on a roll. Of what the fuck? Yes, it was. you're on a roll. I'm sorry. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, the thing for me is Marte is like, what's the batting average of the entire team? Not like, great. It's terrible. So yeah. like, they're winning games because they play good defense. And they pitch well. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, Marte, when I watched him, he's squaring up balls, but nobody's giving him him anything over the plate because they don't worry about the offense enough. 
I think that's going to turn around, but I don't think Arizona is going to make a move to go get a player. That's the downside of a long season. Yep. It's like he just isn't getting protection in the lineup. On the flip side, you look at Jeff McNeil, and Jeff's in a lineup where there's always guys on base. They lead the league in on-base percentage. So Jeff's stuff is always looking good because he almost always has ducks on the pond when he steps up. Yep. You can't walk him because now we got two guys on base, and, and, and things get tragic quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, so yes. interesting, too, on the NL West for a second. Pitching-wise, um, four of the fi- uh, of the top five teams are within the top 15 in ERA across the league. Batting, so, so what's the only team that you think is not in there? Colorado. Correct. They are uh, second to last in, e- in team ERA. However, in – batting average they're number one so they're so so colorado is a is a negative 11 11 uh diff, run differential for the season okay and arizona's a negative 16 but arizona was terrible to start the year yep and colorado was winning a whole bunch to start the year mm-hmm. so they're gonna flip flop at some point in time uh and then you look at san francisco who's currently behind them they're plus 24 they're actually better than san diego Again, it comes down to how did you lose, when did you lose, who did you lose to mm-hmm. this early in the season yep. on, on run differential. Uh, but you're starting to see, like, you, you look at the National League East, the, the Philadelphia Phillies are, are plus five, but they're three games below 500. They've been a little – Atlanta, though, is negative eight. They're three games below 500. Like, you get there in different ways. And I think the the – Atlanta looks suspect pitching right now, but their hitting has been better than I, I anticipated. Um, it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to be an interesting season. There's a lot of things that are going to shift in the back half of this year. Yes, definitely. It's going to be a, a very interesting little I, – I think the way this has started out with a lot of teams being competitive other than the Cincinnati Reds, it's going to be a very fun dynamic within each of the divisions, especially with also the White Sox coming out as cold as they have. Um Dennis Dietz, who's cold? You want cold or hot? Yeah, we're going cold first because I said cold, so we're, gonna, we're just going to rock with it cold. that way. And then we'll get to hot. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that kind of ruins one of my segues, Boo. but I guess I'll have to turn around. Let's start with this one for Bill. Let's go. Let's do it. Bryce Harper, in the last seven days, is batting .091 with a three nine four OPS. Bill, go ahead. Talk about Bryce Harper. Uh, listen, again, we've talked about it. I think Bryce Harper's – ranges of possibilities as a player is the most volatile player in all of baseball because of that i would not pay him to be a premium level player because he can drop off the map so aggressively and does not provide other value above and beyond that like that right there they suck because of him because what's he batting in their lineup third Three Second, four, third, yeah. fourth, yeah. right? Like, he's one of the top two or three batters on, in their lineup. Putting up that number, you're not going to win games. You're, you're having a guy take at bats who's a waste. Uh, but then also on the flip side, Bryce Harper could put up an entire month where he puts up a 1,500 OPS. So his range of possible outcomes has just always been crazy to me. Uh, but this is this one's bad. This one's bad. Staying in division, the Atlanta Braves 5-5. Five and five. That doesn't sound too bad in the last 10, but then you look at some of the key guys in their lineup. Acuna, since coming back, he's batting 200, 526 OPS. Matt Olson has slowed down tremendously, 172 batting average, 639 OPS. My only problem with that last seven days for the Atlanta Braves is genuinely that they played against the Mets. And say whatever you want on whatever you want. Like, they did not – they got shut out in a game. Mm-hmm. They only scored a run in a game. They got lucky to peel off their first victory where the Mets were up 4 nothing, and then, like, tragedies happened. Yesterday, they scored a whole bunch of unearned runs that put the game really away late in the game. McGill yeah. had struck out most of the team. He had nine strikeouts in five innings and hadn't let up a run, and then the, the wheels fell off late in the game for, for him and Adovino. Like, I don't look at that too much as the last seven days. I think last 14 days would have to be the, the cold for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just them running into a buzzsaw of a starting rotation. Fair that's, enough. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as we talked about, like their their entire team's just not hitting right now. But uh, for going to Vladdy now, um, for his standards, he's very cold right now. Uh, he's batting 217 uh, with a 685 OPS. So 
I mean, well, we know he'll turn it around because he is Vlad Guerrero, but just interesting to see, like, he's in a little bit of a slump right now mm-hmm. while the uh, Yankees are just tearing Which the Which is the same thing, the same concept. He just ran into the Yankees. And mm-hmm. Like I said, they've been pitching unbelievably, um, and they they pl- they really stood up to the to the Blue Jays, and, and I think it was really good for them. And obviously, Vlad, it's early, and I'm sure I agree he will bounce back. And, and I, I don't know what his average is currently on the season, but it's got to be over 300. Um but yeah, he you know he gets a little slump here and there, but I think he'll be just fine. Yeah, my my interesting thing with uh, with this goes back to our stat last year when we predicted that the Braves were going to win, uh, well earlier than everybody else. Uh, it's clutch hitting, right? And clutch hitting means like when you are playing your rival, how do you show up? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. The one thing I've been happy about as a Mets fan this year is it just seems that they always score runs. Like, hey, we need runs. Like, even yesterday, like, the real bad inning happens. Very nest. In, back half of that that frame, Pete Alonso doubled down the line. Escobar doubled down the line. Immediately, we were scoring, right? Now, they didn't score much more than that, but it always seems like this team can respond. That clutch hitting, that ability to come up and score runs in this league has become valuable. And right now, I'm, I'm disappointed in Toronto for, for, you know, how little they've been able to hit. I, I give all respect to the Yankees, but you guys are some of the, you got a bunch of all stars. You should be hitting better than you're hitting right now. Yes, absolutely. And we'll see if they can kind of bounce back around. Uh, but but staying with Toronto. Yeah. Hey, who's hot? Uh, I will skip the Seattle Mariners, I guess. Then. Yeah. <laughs> um, fair enough. Uh, Kevin Gosman. Uh, so far to start the season, he's got 41 Ks. He's walked zero batters and given up zero home runs. He has a 2.27 ERA, but his FIP is 0.51. Uh, which I guess, Bill, you'd be the better person to talk about. So that's fielding independent pitching. That's if you take away the fact that your defense might be suspect, what should your ERA actually be? So you'll have a lot of times where a guy's got a 227, but you see they got a 4 FIP. They're going to regress to their FIP. This means that he's been four times better than his results have actually been, which means that right now Kevin Gosman is pitching about as as well as peak, uh, uh, peak Jacob deGrom. So you're going peak Jacob deGrom, and go ahead and tell me who he's pitched against. He has pitched against so far this season the Texas Rangers, the New York Yankees, the Boston Red Sox twice, and then the Houston Astros. So, yes, Texas isn't necessarily killing the world right now, but they're not a bad lineup. Boston's been struggling, but the Yankees But not Houston. a bad lineup. Yeah. Yankees are a good lineup. Houston, again, might not be killing it, but not a bad lineup. You have Jordan Alvarez. Like, you have people there. Uh, I, 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 Gosman's super impressed. Again, I said – let Robbie Ray walk, and I, they, I think they made the right decision. They've they've really their 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 rotation is going to be great. Yep, and and you also talked about it as well uh, earlier in the year that you you had a prediction of Jose Barrios being a a, a Cy Young Award winner, and the fact that they have two guys that could potentially be uh, in the conversation for that is going to be helpful for them. Uh, down the stretch, so Barrios had a little bit of a slow start to the year, though. Absolutely, but it's it's okay when you can replace it with uh, but he, that. <laughs> but now he's two and zero with a four one three ERA. There you go. So he he's, well, he's been say, on the move. listen. Uh, it's kind of like Eric Cole. Eric Cole also started out very slowly, and his last couple starts he's shoved. So I, I think we we can both agree that guys like that will at least at some point get back to where they are in in some capacity where they should be. Um, and then it's a matter of if they can stay there or if they go back to regressing into the original state. So, so funny enough, uh, Barrios started off the uh, the season with a 108 ERA after one start. It's not bad. Uh, then after two starts, he lowered that substantially to an 11.8 ERA. Uh, but his last three starts, uh, he went six innings, one run, seven innings, two runs, uh, five and two-thirds innings, one run. Uh, he's been substantially better, and he's done that again against teams like Boston and Houston. Just a solid line. Who all else around. is hot? Yeah, Dietz, let's go. Dietz. Uh, so who else is hot? We have the Houston Astros. Speaking of people that Gosman has pitched against, speaking against yep. Jordan Alvarez, they have won four of their last five. Kyle Tucker right now is batting four fifty five with a one point two two seven OPS. Jordan Alvarez in that same stretch, four home runs, thirty thirty three average with a twelve eighty two. OPS. Shout out to my fantasy team. Shout out to my to my MLB the show team. Like I always used to trade for for Alvarez because like he he was like an eighty five overall outfielder, but he was like twenty three, 
And like I trade for him, and within like a year, he was a ninety six, and it was always the glory. He's a beast. He is a beast. He's a monster. He, and he, I don't think he gets enough enough respect in the like Acuna Soto like worlds. Well, not even that. Just in the American League. Yes, he's overshadowed by Judge Stanton, but like he's right there in in, in terms of power. Vlad, like hundred percent, I would put Jordan in that same conversation. All so let, let's let's real let's real quick look because he's a little he came up at twenty two, so he didn't come up as young as some of those other guys. Yeah. But he came up at the same time. He this is his fourth year in the league, mm-hmm. right? He's got a thousand sixty seven nine fifty eight eight seventy seven and a thousand and seven OPS. So in his four years in the league, he's been better than Ronald Acuna, but we don't yeah. talk about it. Yeah, right? also- his rookie year, he was a thousand OPS guy. Not talked about nearly enough. Yep. He's never made an All Star game. Blasphemy. Yeah, that is actually ridiculous. that man can absolutely rake. He is not getting enough respect. I am here for all of the Jordan, Jordan Alvarez fucking hype. Please let's bring let's it. Rock it. I'm here for all the underserved. That's, honestly, here in the world. I didn't. Now that you're, we're looking at last year's stats, the fact that he's not an All Star is ridiculous. It, uh, he's never crazy. He had a, a he's a, he right now has got his second thousand plus OPS, and he may not be. An yeah, he All-Star. had his worst year last year at an 877 OPS. Fuck. <laughs> as a as a what 24 year old. Yes. What are we talking about? Like, yeah. Bat- sign me up for that. Where Batted does that 277 exist? with 33 bombs, 104 RBIs. So now, now you know I got to go down this. I got to go down this rabbit hole. I'm I'm too stuck on this concept. Let's go. So we go we go to Ronald Acuna, right? Mm-hmm. So so this is actually Acuna's fifth year, right? So he's never had a thousand OPS year, but he's made two All Stars. Doom doom. He made an All Star appearance in 2019 with an 883 OPS. That's Jordan Alvarez's third best year. You know, I mean, I could say that, like, in the American League, it's harder for – it could potentially be harder for an outfielder to make it because there are so many good guys. Like, I mean, you're talking about getting voted from Mike Trout, Aaron Judge. Like, there's people who are just going to get voted in just because. Um, but also, on the flip side, this is a phenomenal baseball player. I'm I just confused. He hit 35 <laughs> – he had 35 home – or 33 home runs and 35 doubles last year. And that was a down year for him offensively. Yep. You know what? You know what it is? 2020, he tapped out. Mm-hmm. And he didn't play. Like, okay. he only had eight, nine plate appearances in 2020. Mm-hmm. So, like, last year, he, like, reignited that he was good, but he was an 877 OPS guy. Yo, Jordan Alvarez is about to, about to rule the world. I'm coming. I'm it, Love it. I'm to be absolutely on the Jordan Alvarez train. To be continued. Are we going to have a – do we need a Jordan watch? We might. Air Jordan? Listen, I, I'm going to put together my list of underrated savages. Cool. Br- Br- so my underrated savages – so you know what? I'm going to pivot off of the who's hot into my underrated savages. Underrated savages not being talked about enough right now. With Bill Rom. Manny Machado. How are we not talking about Manny Machado? At one point in time, Manny was considered the one of the best players in the entire world. He was the guy. And now somewhere along the, the line, we were like, you know what we're not going to talk about anymore? We're not going to talk about the fact that that dude leads the league in war. He is currently right now above Nolan Arenado at the same position. But everybody's talking about Nolan Arenado's hot start. And Nolan Arenado's hot start has not been as good as Manny Machado's. We talk about Mike Trout coming back, being a great player. 1-8 war. Manny Machado, 2-3 war. Jose Ramirez, such a great player, such a stud. Again, same same position, same kind of world. 1-6 war to a 2-3 war for Manny Machado. Manny Machado right now, if the, if the season ended today, it should be the MVP. But nobody's talking about it. Oh, on the flip side, we go back. Has San Diego been playing pretty well? They sure have. Have they been playing pretty well without Fernando Tatis? Mm-hmm. So, like, Manny Machado... And Eric Hosmer, shout out to my man living up to himself for a hot second, (laughs) right? But Manny Machado is leading this team to glory, and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's discussing it because he just has become an old-school grinder. I'm just going to get after it. Yep. He's not the flashy, like, let me talk about how good I am. I got chains. No, I'm just the best player in the league. And I said last week's show, I said I'd rather have Manny Machado than Bryce Harper. Homie, looking at this right now, poignant. Poignant point. So yes, that's who's hot right now. Nobody's talking about it enough. He's got a, a, like a three fifty eight batting average, and he's mashing home runs and he's playing amazing defense. That's my guy. 
Dennis, Man- Manny, keep being you. Dennis, speaking of mashing home runs, who else has been mashing home runs? Uh, I guess we'll go with the Brewers here, uh, just because they're next on the bullet. Absolutely. Uh, Milwaukee has won uh, eight in their last ten, six in a row. Yelich is finally looking like the old Yelich. He's had two home runs in the past week with a three sixty eight. Uh, Batting average, 1237 OPS. Hunter Renfro has also had three home runs during that stretch. So, mm-hmm. Milwaukee, we knew their starting pitching would be good. Yep. But uh, now their bats are turning around. And their starting pitching is third in the league in ERA with a 305. Uh, very good team. I think we, we knew that they would always be in contention and a, in a conversation as much as I didn't want them to be because I want Josh Hader on the Mets. Um, but you listen, they, they are a really good team, and, and I'm sure they'll be in the conversation for the NL Central. Uh, Dennis. Who else is hitting bombs? I got somebody from the uh, NL East that I want you to talk about. You mean Kyle Schwerber? Yeah. Who hit two off uh, Max Serger? Yes, he did, but I think the balls were juiced, but that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. At least Schwerber's uh, making up for Bryce Harper, at least. Uh, Bryce Harper also went yard that game. 13-25 uh, OPS during that stretch. He's been uh, turning it around after mm-hmm. a slow start. Yeah, I mean, he took a ball that was like six inches like out of the strike zone, low, and he golf balled that thing for a home run. Uh, I agree. That day, the, the balls looked like they were flying a little extra yeah. spicy. Yeah, it was Sunday night baseball. Yeah, ESPN. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna rock in this conspiracy world, but I'm also down to get in a conspiracy world. Uh, Dennis, Minnesota Twins, talk to me. So Minnesota, they have, uh, they're ten and two in their last twelve. Carlos Correa, um, his last week, he is being, uh, he's been batting four fifty two with an eleven uh, hundred OPS. Mm-hmm. He's uh, definitely looking like a good signing for them. But overall, just Minnesota has been a sneaky good team this year. I don't necessarily think they're talked about enough, but mm-hmm. uh, I think they can sustain it and also win the division at this point. Yes, and I think too. I think the problem there is we kind of knew the Twins would be at least a solid club. But more, I, we obviously, all of us picked the White Sox to win the division. Like I was talking about earlier, they had an incredibly slow start, and I think that's more what's being discussed in the fact that the Twins are 15-10 and 10, um, and have been really playing good baseball. Um, and obviously they've been they've been hot in their last 10. Correa's starting to figure it out. His, he, his start was kind of slow, and Byron Buxton was carrying them. But they're kind of really kind of starting to put the pieces together, and I think they'll, I think they can keep it going, honestly. I, I, like, I like their roster right now. Um, minus Gary Sanchez. Minus Gary Sanchez, but listen, they, I think they knew what they were getting with him as much as they wanted him to be the Gary Sanchez of old. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but they've been playing really solid. It's been, it's been good to see. And then uh, the last team I wanted to talk about was just uh, Seattle as a whole. Yeah. Uh, they've been super cold, 3-7 and seven in the last 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse Winker during that stretch is batting 194 with a 536 uh, bat, uh, OPS. Mm-hmm. He's been not great all season. Julio Rodriguez, though, uh, nine stolen bases on the season, which I always appreciate guys stealing bases. Yep. But he's uh, batting 348 with an 878 OPS during this uh, past week. Mm-hmm. And so it looks like he's figuring out the MLB a little bit. He sure Getting is. more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about comfortable. Have you guys seen the bubblegum video? I absolutely have. My Lanta. Playing great defense. Blowing so, bubbles so while he does it. Have you seen the video? I have not. So uh, go on the a, ground screen sh- if you want to watch it. A short, a short hit out to out to right field he collapses in on it and the ball is going to be low so he has to slide in to catch it and as he's coming in to track it he blows a bubble with the bubble gum he's chewing as he slides and catches it and the bubbles in his mouth and it's outside and it just pops and he's like yep i'm just this is so easy that i'm going to chew bubble gum and blow bubbles while i make a diving snag defensively uh that's where I, I was like, oh, man, he's trying to be special right now. Uh, and he's special in a different way, right? Like, we haven't had a guy who comes up who's speedy since, like, Reyes. Like, the last time I remember a guy who's, like, defensively gifted, could hit, was young, exciting, all of these things, stealing bases at the rate that he's been stealing is Jose Reyes. Like, I don't remember somebody terrorizing people on the base pass this mm-hmm. much. Like, he wasn't doing well for a while, and he's already got nine stolen bases. What happens when he heats up fully and he's he's a gifted player? He might steal 50 bases this year, um, which w- would be a welcome thing. I do want to talk about another guy who's not necessarily hot, but it's coming out of being very cold. Okay. On April 15th, Bobby Witt Jr. had a 107 batting average and a 388 OPS. 
Since then, he has climbed his way up to a 229 batting average and a 614 OPS. To do that and come around means he probably was batting close to 300 with probably close to an 800 OPS. So I think Bobby Witt Jr., I think a lot of the young guys are st- starting to find some comfort, which is good to see. I was tired of seeing these guys suck to start the year. So hopefully they continue it. Hopefully they keep doing well. Yes, hopefully. And Dennis, who else has not been doing so, so, so well? Sticking with Seattle, and yeah. this is going to segue into another topic, uh, Jared Kelnick. He is batting 127 on the season with a 480 OPS. Mm -hmm. So the Mets still won that trade despite having to uh, DFA Robinson Cano, right? Well, let's talk about that. DFA DFA Robinson Cano was the last master stroke that needed to happen to prove to me that Steve Cohen's going to be here to win titles for for the Mets. Yep. He just ate $40 million. Somebody posted that... uh, uh, Steve Cohen out here eating $40 million like it's Skittles. Like, he just cut a man who's a borderline Hall of Fame-level player who was due $40 million so that he could keep Dom Smith. Dom Smith rewarded, played really well, Mm -hmm. hits a double in the next bat after that whole thing happened, helped win that game. I love it. It's amazing. Kalenic might suck. Like, it's getting to the point that Kalenic might suck. Kalenic might not be... Uh, a, a non MLB player, but Kalenic might be a guy who's more in like in a Med Rosario zone mm-hmm. than Mike Trout, which is who he was being comped to for a long while. Yes, and I know there like that obviously with Cano being cut and Kellen not playing so well. The the question was like who won the trade, blah blah blah. And when Diaz has been absolutely shoving for the Mets, shoving just filthy, probably the best I've ever seen him and most confident I've ever been in him. Um, because he's come into a lot of big situations and fumbled the bag, and he was he's just been dicing everybody up. Came in for the Mets no-hitter to finish up in the heart of the Phillies batting order, struck out the side, I believe. Um, struck out the side, yep. And not only did he strike out the side, he struck out Castellanos, he struck out Harper, yep. and he struck out Schwarber. Yep. The That's who order. he struck out to win that game. Mm-hmm. So, so three overrated players in a row. But you know what? Listen, I feel like the Mets have won the trade at this point. We talked about it last year when it happened. It was last year, right? Yeah. Uh, or, no, we discussed it when it was all kind of unfolding. Um, and, and I think we said that if Kalanick was, like, the rookie of the year or something like that, that it was, like, questionable who actually won the trade. Um, I'm very happy with where we're at currently in, in this situation. So I, I got a I gotta stat for you guys because it, 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 every time I see this person come up to bat, I feel like they've been good. But when you start to amount and put together the whole season, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Okay. So this player has had 100, roughly 100 at-bats, right? Mm-hmm. They have five home runs, 21 RBIs, right? Mm-hmm. So on on pace for over 100 RBIs for the season. Yeah. On pace for, you know, 35-plus home runs on the season. Have a 260 batting average. Knowing the other things that I've given you, what would be their OPS? Uh, the eights, probably. Some of the eights. Dennis? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to be incredibly high or incredibly low, so I'm going to say 750. Closer to 750 than in the 800s. A 761 OPS for somebody with five home runs and on pace for 120 RBIs. Mm-hmm. Pete Alonzo. It's been a very, very, like his career batting average is 256. All of his power is currently gone. It's the baseball. <laughs> well, but like it also just seems like he's trying to play different. He, I feel like he's come up in the clutch better mm-hmm. by only hitting singles. Well, you know what? Is another interesting stat that I saw too. He has he has five homers, right? Five. Yes. Four of them came when he was DHing. Well, yeah. Listen, when he started off the season, he was super hot DHing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think we we've talked about it. I think Pete has been amazing defensively this year Mm -hmm. he's made a lot of electric plays at first base that are not being given enough credit for how good they were Um, because somebody was showing like i had seen something where he was like a negative run saved guy and i was like absolutely freaking not Mm -hmm. like the the play where lindor threw the guy out and he fully body extensioned his 6'5 270 pound ass and caught the ball and still kept a toe in the bag he he took a hot shot down the line that he picked up, ran to the back. Like he's been exceptional at first base. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, man, I mean, he might just be a better, like it, it might be the best thing for the team for him to more full-time go DH because when he does, he does mash. But doesn't his numbers just seem off? It just doesn't seem like, you know, yeah, that makes sense. It might it might just be a little early, but I could I could see the possibility of him just kind of trying to do too much. I, I, I see a lot of his – he's got a lot of big swings and, and things like that. But, yes, he has been very clutch as well. So I'm fine with that. I, I think it literally is more they're telling him to go for – like, hey, you see, you see it open – Hit against the shift, go opposite way, mm. just hit a bloop single, and get the run. Yes, and he's done that a lot more, which is why his RBIs are higher. Mm-hmm. But like the power set, like I feel like he's got to get back to crushing shots, because if he's crushing shots, he changes the entire dynamic for how people want to pitch Francisco Lindor and other guys in front of him. Mm-hmm. Because you worry about a real quick switch around. Yeah, when he can all of a sudden crush the ball, he still obviously has that power. Mm-hmm. Just been interesting. Just an interesting thought. Just a little, little tidbit, a little, little, little thing, a little spice, a little whatever. Little let's, whatever. Let's get into our big segment. The Otani watch. Bum 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 bum. Dennis Dietz, how is Shohei Otani doing? Uh, so do you want batting or pitching? Let's start with batting. 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 So last ten games for Otani right now, uh, he has ten hits in those ten games. He's batting two seventy with a seven twenty OPS. So. Not Otani levels, but he's not doing terribly. Mm -hmm. What about pitching? Pitching on the season right now, um, he has a 419 ERA. He struck out 30 batters. He's only walked five. Um, His FIP is a 211, though, so I don't know if you want to take that. So the FIP to me is, is is the bigger deal. That means he's been electric. He's been unlucky, right? So, like, being having half the FIP, Mm -hmm. like, and then you've got to start looking right. You got uh, Babbitt is something that's important. Babbitt lets you know how hard guys are hitting the ball. So like, if you have a Babbitt that's super super low, that could be that uh, you've been lucky. If you have a batting if a Babbitt that's around three hundred, a little three fifty, you've probably been about normal. Um, and if you have one that's way higher, uh, typically you're going to do worse than what that is. Uh, but an FIP there. He's been a stud pitching, mm-hmm. uh, and you can see it in the result of the team. The team is winning. And this goes back to the same thing with Pete Alonso, right? Winning matters more than anything. It's why when we used to talk about, like, Mookie Betts, like, yeah, Mookie's numbers might not be as great, but Mookie's always been on winning teams. Yep, always go for the team. So, so like, having stats that don't lead to winning, do they matter? Is that really what – is that just Pete's situation? He just, I he think just trying to win? I think that's what it is. I think that's what it Which is. Which I'm cool with. I think he's looking at situations where in a normal time – he would be like, you know what? I'm going to crush this home run right here, and I'm going to try to pull this ball. And he's instead like, I'm going to go oppo, mm-hmm. and I'm going to bloop a single, and I'm going to drive in the guy from first, from uh, second and third. Because when he even when he hits a double, if it's in the air for a long time and goes off the wall, mm-hmm. the guy at second can't score. Right. But when he bloops that single to opposite field and he soft hits it over there, yeah, his OPS doesn't go high. All this other stuff doesn't go high. But then that guy from second scores, and we've seen that a ton this year. Mm-hmm. Same with Pete. Pete scored from second more than I've ever remembered him ever scoring. Like He balled off the bat. He's taken off. He's scoring runs. So I think that's what's happening with Otani. They're actually winning, so he just doesn't care. Yeah, I mean, he's tied for the fourth in, in the league in RBIs, so cool. Winning is Be winning. a producer. I'm, I'm down. Facts. Facts. For, um, for On the Otani watch, though, are you underwhelmed? Well, no, I think he's gonna. I think he'll spice up. Okay. Like I think right now, it's it's more a portion of he's not having to overdo it. Mm-hmm. So because of that pressure to not have to be great, you also might not be playing as well as you could. Sure. And because, they are in first place. And 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 I think too, like having him be able to be like a number one arm is huge for the yes. Angels. It's probably a huge reason why they're in first place because yes. they have their offense that's producing. And sure, it's not all about Otani having to produce for them. He can do it in other ways and still be super effective and have the Angels in first place, which is dope. But he, I think he'll turn it on. I think so too. I think yeah. he's going to turn it on. Just like I think Pete will turn it on. But I, I think a lot of that comes back to you, you, you're in situational baseball and you're just trying to win. Mm-hmm. Now – Speaking of the Angels, uh, Rendon, 758 OPS. It's not great, but it's not bad. And that team just continues to look like they're deep as hell. And they're going to really actually be there at the end of the year. So going to be an interesting trade deadline, I think, uh, because there's going to be more teams in it, obviously, than ever before. Mm -hmm. Because you're just starting to see that when you have seven 
teams make the postseason, there's just a lot more you know movement. Yeah. Because everybody has a shot. Uh, so I think it's just going to be interesting. Last yeah. uh, ten games for Rendon, uh, he is batting two sixty five with a eight sixty six OPS. So he's definitely heating up a little bit more too. Okay, yeah. that's and big. Power for them. numbers are there. He's got three home runs on the season. Mm-hmm. Like if Rendon's Rendon again, and he keeps getting spicy. And those other guys who've been there keep producing. Their MVP right now is Taylor Ward, without question. Yeah, yes. facts. But, like, Taylor Ward can't continue that, right? Like, that's the anomaly? I, I don't Do know. Do we know that? I don't know. He's a rookie, right? No. Not a rookie? Walsh is the one who's the, the Walsh rookie. Has been, no, Walsh has been bad this year. Um, Not Marsh, Walsh. Yeah, Walsh, uh, right. Marsh is a rookie, I think. Yeah. Jared, Jared Walsh at one point in time was was crushing it for them. He's got an OPS of six seventy right now, so, so he's falling off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Ward's numbers right now. He's leading the league right now in batting average, on base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS. Yeah, but he's twenty eight. Yeah, he's twenty eight, and this is his fifth year in the league. Okay. This this has got it to some degree. Like last year, he was a seven sixty nine OPS guy. Mm-hmm. This has got it. This is a hot start. But you trade it, right? It, oh, Otani's had a slow start. Right. These guys, you could flip flop numbers and be just as good, mm-hmm. right? So, like, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, that, that, again, they're just a well constructed team. Yes. Having well constructed teams is the point. Yep, absolutely. Um, it's Brandon Marsh who's who's been uh, who's who was solid, but now he's even yes, down he's, to a seven oh six. Yeah, he's fallen off a little bit, but he did have a hot start as well. Um, and I think too, just the way the divisions are are shaping up at at this moment. I really see at least like two or three teams in each division that are like can genuinely can can uh, contend for it, and it'll be like a close. I I think it'll be relatively close between those two or three guys at the end of the season, and then obviously with the expanded playoffs that allows for some of them more to get in and us to have a more interesting playoffs. So, very exciting start this so far. I, I'm I'm pumped. It's a great baseball season so yeah, far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're we're biased. Everybody here in this room, their team is in first place. So. Facts. So of course it's. Gonna it's seem a nice like feeling. It's, fun. it's a nice feeling. I've been seeing a lot of the the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger memes, like Mets and Yankee fans, like <laughs> <laughs> being in first place. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a good feeling. It's it's uh, it's what we wanted. So. What's your favorite game you've watched so far this year? Oh, favorite game I've watched so far. I can't, I can't say the Mets no hitter honestly because it wasn't that exciting. My favorite game I watched, uh, and this is another player who I think is about to have a renaissance, okay, um, and is going to make a turn for the better for himself. And I think there was a pivotal moment in his life that just happened that has now changed everything for him. Okay. So Glaber Torres had the game winning hit to opposite field, and. Yes, from that moment forward like that was a great game mm-hmm. tight game it mattered like and glaber came comes up and gets the game winning hit and then he won another game the other night uh and now all of a sudden you start looking at glaber and glaber's numbers are not amazing but they're not bad right all of a sudden he's at a six he's been seven. producing he's got two two walk-offs or something yep, like that two like, walk-off victories he's got a, a 673 ops right now which is historically low for him but his last 10 is 857 and that's go. my point what's uh gallo's last 10 looking like as well give me one second see i think the bigger deal mm-hmm. to me is glaber for the for the yankees no if i agree glaber becomes that guy because now he's playing second right yeah ikf is showing you what a real shortstop supposed to look like mm-hmm. he no longer has the defensive pressure of being the shortstop so he's been able to kind of chill and relax a little bit more mm-hmm. And with him being in the lineup consistently, he's getting his confidence back. He's winning games with his bat, everything else. If Glaber can be an 820 OPS second baseman, mm-hmm. Yankees going to win a lot of games. Yep. Joey Gallo is looking like Joey Gallo. Um, 15 strikeouts in his last 10 games, but he's batting 258 with a 904 OPS. So he's definitely That's hitting the ball. That's substantially better and than it was. And if you have that guy <laughs> yeah. and he's gunning guys out like with his arm, yep. you, you immediately start to reshape – that whole team again joey gallo is going to take a 260 batting average all day every long. day <laughs> every day better than batting 190 facts like but he's been batting and for the last listen couple years and that that just means he's doing something as opposed to absolutely nothing like the first 10 games of the season uh so i'm i'm glad that that's happening and obviously like all the it's interesting that those these certain pieces have been clicking for the yankees like there were questions about ikf absolutely producing questions about glaber producing judge producing Gallo figuring it out. Garrett Cole coming back and playing really well. All of a sudden, the Yankees are in first place and on an absolute roll. 
It's not a coincidence. You want to talk about clutch hitting, though? Uh, Joey Gallo has three home runs. He only has four RBIs during that stretch. So he's just getting solo shot after solo shot. Big me guy. Yeah. Well, where is he in the lineup? Uh, he's got to be low at that point. Yeah, he's point. definitely But that's what I'm saying. In. If he's down at, like, eight, like, he's in a situation where— He's not in situations where, to score, yeah. Yeah, you, you have your six, seven guy who are up. If they're not on, you're hitting solo, solo dubs. You know what I mean? And that's the thing with, like, Jeff McNeil. Like, Jeff McNeil has done most of his damage at the bottom of the lineup. Mm-hmm. So is Canna. The Mets lineup is so weird. They got to drop Starling Marte. They have to. And I know that for his career, he's been a much higher batting average guy. And you're looking at his stuff, and some of it just looks like it's unlucky. Mm-hmm. But also, when you have Jeff McNeil up in the lineup, and you go Nimmo, Lindor, McNeil, Alonzo, mm-hmm. Escobar, and then you have Marte go again, like you all of a sudden create a situation where the bottom of the lineup could restart the whole thing mid mid bottom, mm-hmm. right? You're around the six seven hitter, you can restart your lineup and now you have another leadoff guy going. Yep. I think that's a better lineup balance for them. Mm-hmm. Marte up at the top, I just haven't loved. And McNeil not getting to bat three forty at the top of a lineup mm-hmm. just takes great at bats away. Yeah. You see yeah. him whenever he doesn't get a hit, he's just freaking angry. Absolutely. He's pissed off. Well everything I'm hearing is that he he's obviously gone back to his original style of yes. hitting, but like he only goes out there to hit singles. That's yes. all he wants to do. And yeah. then if, if he hits a jack, glorious. But that's yeah. not and, and that's that's why he's frustrated because it's pretty easy for him to just be like, I'm just gonna put the bat on the ball and it's probably gonna be a hit. Because his like back to ball is just crazy good. And people have been saying like uh, you hear the the Mets crew, they're like, why are people shifting on McNeil? Oh, that's the dumbest. And then they shift on him. You go bloop. I, I hate that. Did you see um the the Bryce Harper shift a couple days ago? I did not. <laughs> did you it see it? So, it was so stupid. It was the dumbest. Like it was four outfielders. Four outfielders. The int- there was no one left out of the infield, which was just like infuriating. But I understood like situationally, it was three and one, so. He could like, theory. It's either a walk or he's uh, like whatever. It's not going to be. If shot you're the other a way. top ten player in the league, is it okay? Can you be considered a top ten player in the league if they don't even have infielders because you can't just hit a ground ball? Like if it's impossible for you to hit a ground ball to the left side of the the, the infield, impossible. You can't be a top ten player. Like, I don't think Pete Alonso is a top 10 player, right? I think top, Pete Alonso is a great first baseman, massive power hitter, but he has giant holes in his game, mm-hmm. right? Which is okay. But when we're talking about you're the MVP of the league, like, is it even possible for you to be considered that when I can do this and you can't do anything about it? Uh, I, I definitely agree with your thought process. My question, honestly, has always been, like, when sh- the shifts exist, like, how do you get to like like genuinely? How hard is it? Obviously, hitting an MLB pitcher is extremely difficult. Yeah. But if you're also considered an elite hitter, like if you're Bryce Harper, you're an MVP guy. Yep. How are you, how can you not change your approach to just hit a ball the other way? Back, like, or just what drop are you down doing? a bunt if there's no one on facts. the entire left side of the infield. Facts. So the, the one thing I have noticed, and I don't know if you guys are noticing the same thing. Obviously, I've seen it a lot with the Mets, but I like even Julio Rodriguez and and some other things. Small ball is on the come up. Yes, absolutely. Right? Small ball is on the come up. Bags are being stolen. Bunts are real. You, you got guys who, like IKF is is like the, the perfect example. Here's a guy who's going to bat 300 and never hit home runs. But because he hits all the time, he just puts pressure. And this is what we were talking about earlier in the show about does bet, when's the last time batting average mattered. Mm-hmm. Right? Or maybe that was off air. And I was saying, no, was when, when's, when's the last time batting average mattered? And it's it's been a very, very long time. But it matters in team construction. Uh, and that's why I thought Starling Marte was important mm-hmm. because his career batting average over 300. Sometimes you need a guy who can get a hit to get on because a walk isn't as valuable. At some point in time, a guy with a 350 on base percentage, right, that walks a bunch and a 350 on base percentage who bats 300 are not equal depending on where you put them in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Because if you bat 315 and there's guys on base, Getting a hit is better than a walk. Yep. Right? Like, your batting average with runners in scoring position will always be shitty if you don't hit well in, like, period, end of sentence. Yep. You're not a clutch player. So, like, Jeff McNeil, soft tap hits. 
we're seeing more of those like old school guys mm -hmm. stealing bases, like pitch outs, like things that you haven't seen in forever yep. are coming back. Mm -hmm. I and love it. I love it. I love it's, it. As much as like, I know like, like the sport changes, all sports change. I always felt like for me as like a purist, like that having those aspects of the game is what like completes baseball as a sport. It's like those elements are super important and it adds to the speed of the game and, and kind of like just the intensity of it because you don't really like there's so many more scenarios that can happen. It's not just like Bryce Harper's gonna get up and it's either gonna be a home or a strikeout. If Bryce Harper's trying to also it could potentially bunt for a hit or be a contact hitter and just slap one the other way and you're talking about RBIs and just more ball movement. So I th I think personally that baseball has baseball has gotten too much like basketball because of how the game can be played. Mm -hmm. So like basketball's analytics have gotten to the point that shooting a three point shot is so much more valuable than shooting two okay. that big players, tall guys, almost can't even stay on the court. Yep. Because in the course of an of a of a meaningful game you have a guy who's seven foot one having to come out to a three point line against a guy who's six foot seven and can shoot threes. And because of how things have changed, you make it that this guy almost can't compete. I think that there for basketball has to be rule changes. So the same thing kind of happened with baseball, but I don't think it has to be that way. Mm -hmm. You look at the NFL, and I think the NFL is the best league in terms of. You can design a team differently and still win. Yep. So, like, the perfect example of a team who was completely built differently than everybody else is the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. We have a 260-pound a running back who gets the ball 30 times a game. Mm -hmm. No one else is doing that. Now you have a, a few teams who do. The Colts are built that way. Play action, run the football 30 times a game, play action with your quarterback. The Vikings are built that day, that way. But then you have teams who have Josh Allens, who now it's like we're not going to run the ball that often because our QB can run sometimes, and they're so good and can throw it to so many places that we have to run this style. But the Titans were able to win games because they're so foreign. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's line, it's like we got 230-pound linebackers, and you have a 260-pound running back. We're, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Right, if your team doesn't have a guy who can hang with that, you, they'll beat you. Right, and the Titans have been beating the Buffalo Bills consistently for the last couple of years. They're just a bad, a bad matchup for the Bills. Yeah, because of how they're constructed. I think baseball has the ability to go against things more than basketball, because nothing has changed in the in the in the constraints of the game, like basketball having a three-point line with analytics. Right, right. That will completely alter how the game was originally done. Right. The idea that you should be laying bunts down, down a line, because people are shifting, has to come back. Yeah. And and it you'll win more games. You look at the Kansas City Royals in 2015. They were the last of the hit singles teams. Yep. And they beat the Mets. Well, it's really the... It's exactly you're exactly right. It's it's how do you want to play the game because you both can win. You can your team can hit uh, 300 home runs as a group, and you guys can go win a World Series. Great, but also your team can as a as a team bat 320, and only have like two home run hitters and also win the World Series. So but, it's just like how you want to construct it, and, and I think too like the way pitching has become now you get you get a lot more hitters that are Joey Gallo types that are boom or bust. And you, you look at it as, okay, but I, wouldn't I rather have consistency than have guys who, yes, can hit home runs, but there's an it's it's relatively easy to also get them out. So, like, what which way is, is more effective long-term, I guess? Yeah, and, and this is this is the, the, the idea, right? Because, like, this player has a 295 batting average, a 329 on-base percentage, but only a 701 OPS. Are they? They have two stolen bases, uh, s stolen bases, and in, in three attempts, right? Got thrown out once. They've walked only five times. Is this player a valuable player? I think so. Well, but a seven hundred OPS. What's like there? We, when we talk, we've we, listen. Go our, ahead, say it. Say it. What were we gonna say? Our last season, we one of our favorite statistics was OPS with on scoring position. 
I don't know what that guy's OPS run a scoring position is, but it might be amazing. Well, what if this player is also potentially one of the top three players at his position defensively? I know who you're talking about. Who am I talking about? IKF. IKF. We've brought it up multiple times. The dude has a good batting average. He does not hit for power whatsoever. He will only hit singles. But when you watch him play defense, I said to Josh Shapiro the other day when we were watching IKF, and he fields a ball on the outfield grass, turns, and guns the guy out from the outfield grass at first base in the air. The Yankees have not had that in 30 years. And with so many other guys who can just bang a baseball, mm -hmm. he is valuable to them. Yes. And that is team construction. Yep that the NBA has kind of lo lost for a minute. Now, thankfully, that the Nets are, are a dumpster fire, the league is going to move back to team construction and not just go get superstars and allow them to move everywhere because mm -hmm. it's proven to not work unless your name is LeBron James. Like, the, the NBA is now going to go back to team. Baseball is going back to, are you good at what we need and not just are you more of what we already have? Because yep. the Yankees for a minute was, don't care if you strike out, don't care if you have a low batting average, we want a high OPS and hit and lots of home runs. That's it. Yep. And they sucked. They could win in a regular season because over 162 games, that will win for you. But when teams can walk you and they'll squeeze here and they'll do this and winning is all that matters, those guys can't win baseball games. Yep. Exactly. This team, I love IKF. I like Rizzo. The, I, I like what they've done. They still need starting pitching because it's going to fold in the second half. But I well, that's like, something I like that, how that's going. something they can add at the trade deadline and be Factually. a legitimate contender. Factually. And I completely agree with it. I love how they're constructed. I love that they're performing well. I love that the Mets are performing well. I, I stand by the fact that I would love a, a Subway series. That's all I want. Um, guys, that's it for today's episode. I got that's nothing else for you. It was a great episode. I Absolutely. Loved, loved it. Really good. Great energy. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us on everything, and we will see you next time. Later. Baseball lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs>